Hello there. Today we'll be doing a little bit of camera matching, a little bit of UVing, and swapping data between Lightwave, After Effects, and Element 3D. Here's the reference image we'll be using I recently had from a client job. It's at 1920-1080, which also happens to be the resolution of our final output. Just gonna drag that into layout into a fresh scene. What I'm also gonna do is create a new cubed at one meter squared, just for reference, center on the bottom. And I'm gonna shift this 0.5 of a meter on the X and Z, so the origin lines up with this line here. We won't actually be using it, this is purely for reference. Go over to your render tab, set background image. We'll pick the interior angle as we've just dragged in and the camera will adjust its settings to suit. That's pretty straightforward and to get our bearings, I'm also gonna hit F4, so we've got an idea of what's going on in the scene. Let's just jump straight into the match perspective. Make sure the camera is selected and you're in the render tab and we'll go to match perspective. Red is X, green is Y, blue is Z. So let's just marry up as best we can these little handles. Now this is where it's best to have an image with a flaw in it so we can get our perspectives. But we're gonna have to guess here. So I'm guessing my perspective point is somewhere, I don't know, back here somewhere. That's not looking too bad. Let's press N on the keyboard for some more options. So origin, we'll click on that. And that brings us right at zero, zero, zero. So we'll click and drag down in this case to bring it forward. We haven't got the floor, so that's as close as we can get, but that's far too big. Where it says fixed height, we'll go to height from floor. We'll drag this bottom here and we'll loosely guess what one meter in height would be. Okay, so the origin is lined up with this windowsill here. That's zero, zero, zero. And that's loosely about meter. So let's press space on the keyboard to drop that tool. And because the ground is actually down here, we're manually just gonna move the camera up a little bit. Now remember, if you're not happy with any of this, you can always go back and make tweaks, but you wanna do this at the early stages, certainly before you start UVing your object. Just a couple of other tips while we're here. If you're not sure about an angle, just move the camera to another frame and go through the whole process again. However you wanna do that, and it will create a key, but you haven't actually lost your initial move. And also if you right mouse click over one of these nodes, you'll get a zoomed in view, which is good if you've got markers. And it also slows the movement down so you've got a fine adjustment. But for now, I'm happy with what I have. Let's move on to Modeler. So this is quite a straightforward process actually. I'm going to the right hand panel here and I'm gonna go and choose Layout View. So we have the background image looking through the camera. First move is to create this wall here. We'll just do that with a box. So we'll start at the top. We'll make sure the base is at the bottom. And this left-hand side is at zero coordinates on the X. And press V, Z, make sure that is also at the origin. So you can see straight away here, it's not perfectly aligned, so we could go back and tweak that. But I'm gonna keep it as is for now. From here on, I'm just gonna use the knife tool, select an edge and extrude. <laughs> Okay, so that's not too bad. So I'm going to select these pieces here. Again, E to extrude, T to move. Okay, so I've got this box here. I'm going to draw a box out. So I'm going to flatten these out, H, and we're going to add a roof onto this. Flip that, and I'm also going to add a ground. So a ground plane, just so it covers up, just so it covers the floor, V, zero. Okay, to those two, 
I'm going to select both of those, cut them and put them in a new layer. So they're out of the way. In fact, I probably don't even need those two points, do I? Okay, now let's sort the window out. Now this is where time is money, which is why I purchased a copy of Lightwave CAD. <laughs> so we go for the Windows option. So let's go to Windows and Doors, and I'm going to choose this window here. And I'm simply going to draw out the window. So that's pretty good, and then I'm going to move it back. into the window. I don't have to here, but I'm going to, I'm going to put those into a layer on their own. There they are. And if I bring up the surface editor, they have got their own surface, which will come in very handy. Okay, final stage. I'm just going to tighten up this space here. So I'm going to select these points and move them accordingly. So that's all good. Now for the laborious task of UVing, but I'm going to keep this super simple and I'm just going to use Atlas. You can go to town on yours. I'm not going to. <laughs> so let's go to texture plus, let's call it room, live update. So let's have a look at see what that looks like. Obviously wrong, but I'm going to Atlas here. So I have enough there to select what I need and move into position. So we'll come back after I've done that. So here we are, probably not the best unpack you've ever seen, but <laughs> it will work for this. So I've basically got this wall here as one continuous piece, and then I've got the side bits. And the walls here are compacted together, we're not really going to see those. And this lower part is down here. Now before we start exporting, let's just set up the texture for this. If you saw my previous Lightwave to Element 3D tutorial, you'll see we need to change the principled BSDF to a standard material. And under color, we need to plug this directly into the texture channel. So I'll go for an image map as it defaults to. Projection type, UV. UV map is our room. That's all we've got to do there. If there's something that needs smoothing in there, now's the time to do it. So that layer's all set up. We've got our roof and floor. Let's just call that ends, shall we? I don't think we'll be seeing those. And then we have our windows, which are already textured. Now I know Element prefers stuff to be tripled, and I know I may have issues with this frame here. So I'm gonna select the whole frame, press Shift T to triple that. And hopefully in Element, that will all come through nicely. Okay, time to export. So let's select all the layers that we wanna go through as an OBJ. So we have the room, floor, ceiling, and frame. So top tip before we export, when you installed Element 3D on your computer, you would have created like this home folder for the Element 3D stuff. So that's where the barrels and all the materials and presets are stored. You will also find a models folder in here. And this is where I'm gonna save the room. This is the folder it looks at by default. So if you have multiple layers with this room on it, it'll straight away look to this models folder. If you stored it elsewhere on your hard drive and you had to move the project around, you'd probably have to go and relink each model one at a time. So this is a good tip if you need to share this model as well. Make sure whoever you give this OBJ to is put into the same place and it'll save them having to relink the model each time as well. We'll jump over to the In Out tab and just to show you the defaults that I have. So OBJ, nothing special here. I think this is pretty much the defaults. I thought I'd found a formula in the past so I could marry exactly the scales in Element and Lightwave, but it seems not to work these days, so I've just left it at default. I'm going to have to eyeball that later. Let's go over here to Export, hit OBJ, and as I've shown, I'm going to save that into this folder here. Let's just call it Room. Okay, that. And one final thing to do while we're here is we're going to export the UV as an EPS. So we'll go to EPS, which is Export EPS. For View, we will select Text to UV, so we plonk it in here. Okay, now we're pretty much done in Modeler. I've fired up After Effects and created a comp called Room. I've brought in our reference shot and also our EPS UV map that we just exported from Modeler. Let's get Element in there first. 
that's all good, let's go to the scene setup. And as mentioned earlier, there's my models folder and the room will be here by default. So let's double click on that to load. Force alignment, I want from model. Okay to that. Now due to those export options, it's gonna be tiny, so I'm gonna hit normalize size. That brings it up. See what we have. So we've got the glass panes and window frame. That hasn't come through as expected, so we'll have to go back and fix that, which is easy enough. We have the ends, which is the floor and the ceiling. And we also have a room. So default, this is what the room textures applied to. And we should see down here that we are set to UV coordinates. We'll keep the windows turned off while we get set up and we'll okay to that. So here's the room and we can see where that origin point is. Now we know this is at zero, zero, zero. So I'm gonna go over here. So for the position zero, zero, and the position is zero. We'll have to eyeball this particle size, but you'll notice we have no camera. So let's go over to layout. There's our scene, let's select the camera and we go over to the in out tab and we will click send to AE. That's great, now jumping back to After Effects, here's the camera. I'm actually gonna remove all these keyframes because they're not doing anything. Let's knock the opacity down so we can see kind of what's going on here. Up to particle size, we're gonna scale that up so it marries up with how we set it up in Modeler. That's good, but we can't actually see the walls. So let's add a light, point light, just for reference. We don't need this reference anymore, so I'm just gonna turn it off. So let's set up the UV map for this chap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new comp, call it room UV. I'm gonna make it square like the UV map at 1024. I'm gonna drag the room EPS into there and command option F to make it full screen and then collapse it for full quality. Okay, so back in the room, let's grab us the room UV and turn it off. Under element, we'll go to the custom layers. Go back into the scene setup. We're gonna point this to the UV map. So let's click on here, load texture, which is layer one, which we just pointed it at, and okay that, and okay that. And here we go. If we hit F11, we can have a look around. Now it looks like my UV texture is upside down on that wall there. I'm not too concerned about that because I don't think we're going to see that. But that's looking pretty good. So to check this working properly, we're going to lock this comp. We're going to double click on this room UV comp. We're just going to open a new tab. I'm going to peel that off and put it to the side here so we can see both and I'm going to lock that. So now let's just check this working. Let's make a shape layer. That wall blue, that seems to be working. There we go, and our walls seem to be working as well. So effectively, we're all set up, ready to go. We'll move the room EPS to the top, we'll right mouse click on it, and turn it into a guide layer so it doesn't show you through, and lock it. So we now have a reference of our UV map, and we can texture it however we like in here. Let's sort out those window frames. So we'll jump back to Modeler. Here they are here. Now I tripled them last time, but I didn't do all of them. So all I'm gonna do is the same process, but without selecting anything. So Shift T, which will triple the whole lot. I need to select all layers again. In Out tab and export as an OBJ. And I'm just gonna overwrite the version we saved earlier. So click on that, save and overwrite. So it doesn't automatically update in Element. What we've got to do is we've got to go to the room, which is this one here. We'll click on the E3D scene setup. Let's turn those on and it should have just automatically updated itself, which it has, which is excellent. Now, if you wanted to save a new model out, you could just go right mouse click, replace model. But for now, this is working exactly as I want it. Okay, great. And that's basically the whole process. You now have enough in there to get on with the texturing and any camera moves, animations, lighting, whatever you need to throw at it. What I really like about this workflow is you can work in either After Effects or Lightwave. If you're more comfortable animating the camera in Lightwave, do that and just send those details through to After Effects.
could even go the other way around if you wanted to. So you could animate your elements in After Effects and then send the data through via the script supplied with the Lightwave install. Here's a little breakdown of the scene I showed at the beginning. Just the same, we have an Element 3D layer with a room object. and I've just chucked a chair in there as that was part of the original reference. Similar again with the UV map. Now it just needed to be a decayed wall really, so that made my job a lot easier. It meant I could just throw a few grungy textures in there and position to suit. And also a few environmental things there. So I've just got a simple rain effect on a couple of planes there for a bit of added depth. A tree in the background, more grungy textures on the window. And as you can see, I basically color graded its balls off. And a few lights to make up the lightning effects. So there you go. And again, I hope that was of use to you. It's just a crying shame at this time of recording that Lightwave is dead.